Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 public beta is finally here along with iOS 17 beta 3 re-release. Both are the exact same with the same build number and features and there's even more features that have been found since the iOS 17 beta 3 re-release is out what's new video. We'll talk about that, we'll also talk about the overall experience as I've been using it full time on my 14 Pro Max and iPad Pro. We'll also talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video there's over 10,000 votes and 170 comments. I've used all of those comments to determine what the overall experience is like. We'll talk about that and some of your comments a little bit later. But first, let's talk about emoji. And every year there's new emoji. You'll see these are the new emojis in 2023 and 2024, and these are decided on by the Unicode Consortium. This is actually not determined by Apple, but rather sort of a consortium that decides what the next standard will be. Then iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, every different operating system adopts those. So you'll see a shaking face, you'll have head shaking vertically, phoenix bird, and more. You have a broken chain and some accessibility ones as well. So these could be coming later on. We could see them later this year or early next year. Also, Apple Tap to Pay launched in the UK this week. So if you have that capability, you have a business and you want to accept payments on your iPhone, you should be able to do that. Now, as far as new features, let's first take a look at books. If we go into books, tap on a book here, this is the iOS 12.3 user guide. Maybe we want to copy something. So we'll highlight this and maybe we want to use it in a paper, but we want to cite it as well. If we slide over and copy within iOS 17 and then paste it, it will automatically cite it by itself, saying that it's an excerpt from give the information and more. This is great. If maybe you're writing a paper, it just makes it one less step. However, you may have to format it into whatever the format is you're using, but it's great to see that I did not see it in iOS 16, but it was there with iOS 17 beta two and now beta three within settings. If we go to Siri and search and then set our language to English United Kingdom, if we go back to Siri voice, there's a new voice. We have four options now. So take a listen. Here's voice one. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use voice two. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Voice three. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. And finally, voice four. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. So we have a few new options or a new option there. Let me know which one you use in the comments below and if you'll use the new one as well. There's also a new update to Siri where you can select Indic languages and use them in combination with one another. Hindi, Telugu, Punjabi, Kannada, and Marathi. Hopefully I'm saying all of those properly and also mix those with English as well if you're speaking. So let me know if I pronounce those properly in the comments below. Within the phone settings, they've updated this as well. So maybe you're using multiple SIM cards. You now have the option to set multiple ringtones based on SIM card. So I only have one SIM card, so I can just set a singular ringtone. But if you have multiple SIM cards, you'll now be able to set multiple ringtones, one for each number. Within the control center, if we use Shazam to identify a song, so let me go ahead and do that. Once a song has been identified, there's a new notification showing the Apple Music logo, and you can jump right to this in the Music app using Shazam. So it's a nice little notification they've added. If we go into Music, I'm now seeing a new splash screen. This wasn't here earlier today. It just popped up and then says what's new in Apple Music. It goes over share play, crossfade between songs, which I'm really enjoying, and song credits. And song credits not only have been updated here and it's not letting me continue, so I guess I'll have to close out of the app and try again. And within music, now that we're back in, if we tap the three dots next to the song, I showed you before how there's a song credit here where you can view those. However, you can go into that faster by pressing and holding on the song and then you'll see the eye here. Tap on that and it brings you right into the credits. It's something that's newer that it was just recently discovered. So it's great to see that it's just a couple different ways to access that, which is a little different for Apple. If we go into Safari, maybe just to apple.com and take a screenshot, tap on the screenshot and then select full page. If we tap done, when we've finished under done, you'll now have the option to save to photos. So you can save a full page screenshot directly to photos where it wasn't as easy to do that before. 
And if we go into photos, I showed you before where it identifies different animals now and marking them with the specific animal here for visual lookup. We have a cat. If we go over, you'll see it changes to a dog and it also shows music. And I showed this before, but it seems with beta three re-release, I can look up the album and it sort of works. It doesn't fully bring up all the information, but it works a little more than it did in the previous version. Also, it identifies birds as well. So this is just a screenshot from the Wikipedia page and you'll see it identifies the birds and it says Eastern yellow Robin. So we've seen more and more updates with this, with the visual lookup. I'm not sure how many more things it will identify as Apple hasn't said, but it seems to identify every variety of animals so far. And it's not just a little paw print like it was before. Within settings, if we have the keyboard option for Polish, we now have the option to use the quick path keyboard with it. So if we select the Polish keyboard here and we just swipe, you'll see that it predicts text and will autofill. It doesn't do that in iOS 16. They've also added this for Germany as well, where I've shown that in a different video within the contacts app. We now have some more customization options. If we go to edit and then edit at the top, then customize at the bottom, we can customize the contact photo or poster. And within here, if we go to monogram, we have the option to customize it with a ton of different colors and variants in between. So that's been added, which is really nice and helps you customize different contacts. You can customize with Memoji and photos. And the same is true. If we go to cancel here, customize contact photo, we have the option for some monograms here as well with different colors within spotlight search. If you search for an artist, tap their name at the top, you'll see that we have a new artist profile at the top with their latest albums listed below. They've updated this for just about every major artist. However, not everyone is found there just yet. Watch OS 10 gets an update using Siri. If we send a message using Siri, send a message to Zach Zolo. What do you want to say? This is a test message using watch OS 10. Okay. Sending to cancel. You can also press the digital crown on your watch. You'll see there's a new status that goes around the send button. Thanks to Brahm for pointing this out to me and you'll see it sends and just let you know it's pretty simple and straightforward there. Also within the new Snoopy watch face, it seems to be aware of things such as birthdays and more. So there's more and more customization. It changes more often. And some people are seeing more and more animations with this. So I'm not seeing a ton of them as I don't use it full time, but I thought that's great that they've just added a bunch of little animation and features to it. That's aware of things like birthdays. Also, if you're wondering what watch face I'm using as I get that question all the time, if we press and hold here, go to edit, you'll see it's the modular watch face. And as far as the complications go, this one in the middle is called Lumi. So that's when I actually purchased and it's a nice little update that tells you different times of the day when it's best to take a photo or video. And then of course we just have our temperature compass music date and then messages. So nothing really too major here, but that's what it is. If you're wondering. Now, Mac OS gets an update as well that I wanted to mention. It now supports using Keychain or the password manager on third party browsers. So, if you're using Keychain, it'll work on other browsers on Mac OS Sonoma. That's great if you're running the latest public beta or beta 3 re release. Now, as far as the overall experiences, well, we're not going to talk a whole lot about iOS 16.5.1, but most people say it's pretty good. If you want a very stable version, I would stay on that. I wouldn't use the betas. However, iOS 16.6 beta, beta five in particular seems to be very stable, but it doesn't bring a whole lot of new features or changes just yet. Now, as far as iOS 17 beta three re-release and public beta, like I said, they're the exact same thing. The overall experience really depends on what you use the most. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's not. As far as camera goes though, there are some issues with focusing people have mentioned. I haven't had too many issues, but occasionally it seems to be blurry depending on how close you are. That could just be some of the focus distance we had before, but I've heard other people mention that it's actually a problem and won't focus entirely. So that could be an issue. And there are some camera improvements I've shown before. Let's take a look at just a couple of them and compare it with what we have now. 
with iOS 16.5.1. So I'll use both of these cameras. And as you can see, I think iOS 17 looks a little bit better. It typically is a little more saturated, I think, but it seems to be less sharp, which is what many people complained about and less modified as far as overall processing. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. As far as overall bugs that have been fixed, well, there really isn't any difference between beta three and beta three re-release. Withdrawing money from Apple savings seems to still be working properly. The copy and paste bug was fixed. Dismissing a shortcut pop-up menu works properly, as I mentioned before, and the health icon on the iPad is still correct, where it was a problem before. So the health icon was sort of pixelated and odd before. I'm not sure where it is. There it is. And it seems much better better on the beta three and beta three re-release. So not really much differences between the code on beta three and beta three re-release and public beta, but it does seem to be a little bit better. There are still bugs though, in particular, the keyboard bug where it will just sort of disappear where you can't type in text and then you have to exit the app and go back in. This was an issue on beta three and also beta three re-release and public beta. Some people said it was fixed. I don't think it's fixed as I thought it was before. Many people are seeing a wallpaper bug when they reboot, the wallpaper will disappear entirely. And of course the notification bug is still there. As you can see here, that's still an issue. And the wallpaper bug, as I was showing you before, if we go in, not only when you reboot does it sometimes disappear, but if we go in and set a wallpaper, oftentimes the wallpapers are blank, sometimes they'll fill in, sometimes they won't, and you have to go back and forth to see if they'll actually show. So there's definitely some odd bugs here and there. Oftentimes my home hubs are not working properly and I've seen this complaint elsewhere where I just keep me getting messages over and over that the home hub is unavailable. And sometimes Siri says it doesn't understand. Also, I've heard a lot of complaints of apps and games crashing. So going into different apps, whether it's threads, Twitter, something else, it seems to crash over and over. However, those two seem to be more stable, but other people have complained about different games crashing or just locking up and freezing in general. Text message forwarding, however, seems to be a little bit better, but still not 100% on beta three re-release, forwarding from my iPhone to my iPad or Mac. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Also, as far as performance, performance seems to be pretty good other than the lockups and the odd keyboard disappearing bug, but in general, just going into different apps, whether that be music, swiping home, ProMotion, swiping and everything is nice and smooth. I really have no complaints there. The only complaints I have is with odd lockups here and there. So going into different apps, and also one thing I forgot to mention is people are having a lot of issues with their widgets disappearing. Mine seem to be working okay, but I only tend to use one or two of them. But let me know what widgets you're using if they're not showing up properly. Now, as far as the overall heat, well, it depends on what you're doing, but it's staying fairly cool for me. It's cool to the touch. And for those of you that want to see the thermal camera and using the thermal camera, the hottest area seems to be about 33 degrees Celsius, 92 degrees Fahrenheit. So just about both of those as far as the overall temperature. So not horrible. It's a little bit warm as the screen's been on the entire time, but not really, really hot. I've seen it get very hot before, and some people are saying it gets very hot when 5G is enabled. I noticed this last week or so with beta three and turned off 5G and noticed a significant increase in battery life. So something's going on with the 5G modem. Using LTE sometimes helps. As far as battery life, if we go into settings, go down to battery, we've been following the overall battery health. I'm still at 92% after 237 cycles. So. Coconut battery says I'm about 94%, so it's hard to say for sure. But either way, I have a lot of cycles this year compared to last year, as this has been using a ton of battery, not just iOS 17 betas, but iOS 16 betas. Yesterday, I only had three hours and 10 minutes of screen active time, five hours and six minutes of screen idle time, and used almost 100% of my battery life. Three hours for an iPhone 14 Pro Max is pretty unacceptable as far as battery life goes. The same was true about the day before three hours and one minute. And I didn't really use a whole lot of intensive applications, Twitter, home and lock screen messages, Instagram, Gmail, nothing really intensive, no games, no video watching. It just really uses the battery a lot. So that's definitely an issue with iOS 17. So if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17 beta three re-release or iOS 17 public beta, if you're really depending on your phone as being super reliable and having great battery, well, I would definitely hold off until maybe a couple betas later. If you want to try it out and you have a secondary device or an iPad, you don't use 
regularly, well then definitely give it a try, but just be aware that you need a computer in order to downgrade back. Make sure you have a backup before you try it out though, but it's overall fairly stable for an early beta, but I wouldn't try it on your main device unless you know what you're getting into. As far as iOS 17 at beta fours release, well, we could see it as soon as next week or the week after last year, Apple waited a couple weeks after the public beta release. So we had it around the 27th or so, so it could be a couple weeks still, hopefully it'll be next week, but we don't know for sure. The final release of course will be in September sometime. So only a couple months away. I can't believe we're that close to it, but we'll see the iPhone 15 pro and all those phones around that time as well. As far as iOS 16.6 betas, well, I would expect iOS 16.6 RC this week as well. Maybe a final release later in the week or next Monday on the 24th. So, or the following Monday on the 24th. So that's what I would expect for iOS 16.6. Then we'll see iOS 16.7. Now, as far as what you had to say about the overall experience, let's take a look at some of your comments. Sandigal man says iPhone 10 S max running iOS 17 dev beta three, having some issues, apps that won't run and instantly crash upon opening a couple of apps that run, but no longer function properly widgets that don't display properly, or you can no longer tap to interact with. So some odd issues there. Victorcy said iPhone 12 pro in beta three battery life is pretty good under normal use, but when using 5g or GPS outside during the summer days, my phone gets pretty hot. Miro Martinez says, hi, Aaron, I'm using iOS 17 beta three re-release on my iPhone 10 R, but it seems so smooth and perfect. Stacy Gray said using iOS 17 beta three re-release and it's been great widgets. Don't always update weather in particular, but otherwise no complaints. It's been very stable for an early beta battery is fine for me. Not massively different to what I was getting with iOS 16.5.1 battery health still a hundred percent. It's disappointing that the notification issues on the lock screen still haven't been fixed as that's the same juddery mess that it was in iOS 16. This is the one area that really let iOS down as everything else is so smooth. iPhone 13 base on iOS 17 public beta, pretty buggy, but they're not severe. Cellular networks vanish randomly. Widgets won't load data. Screen time doesn't work. Battery not on par with iOS 16.5.1, but good enough. Beta three is buggier than beta one. So that's everything with iOS 17 beta three re-release and iOS 17 public beta. I'm glad both of them are finally here and we're moving on to hopefully a more stable future for iOS iOS 17 beta four should have some more new features in it. And if you found anything else I haven't mentioned in this video, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.